Going for a walk with log eat dog. Mess with me will turn you into a hog. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here with my cousin I haven't seen for many years. I don't know how many years it's been, maybe twelve or more, but here I am. Went to the park with the doggy goose, and guess what they did? Daisy Duty. That's her name. Gone Duty is her claim to fame. Jim coins, coins, Jim coins, up, up, Jim coins in news, up, Jim coins, silver, Jim coins, gold, Jim coins in news, Madison. Why, oh, why, Nick, why, why you wanna make the green guy cry? A single tear dropped from his eye while they hold me away, yeah. Barely legal, but still 18. Mister, you're in trouble now, you see. The Hulk is strong, but he won't break you free. For grand larceny, not in fact. Here we are. 
VCR. It's VCR party. Yeah. yeah. Hey, everybody. I'm Nick from Found Footage Festival. We got Joe over there. And Hi. also joining us, our VHS detective, George Passless, and our director, Steve Lawrence, the human car crash. Welcome, everybody, to the show where we watch VHS tapes. Joe is surrounded by about 13,000 tapes in our office. You keep adding it. I keep going lower because we're getting rid of our doubles now. So the number's coming down. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah, you're right. I We, we don't have <laughs> you add a thousand every single week. Well, because we keep getting new ones in the mail. It's true. So, it's true. Um, well, we, we did. We have like 17, but we got to do another Foxy unboxing. But we just got a huge box from uh, Bob uh, Hedges. And I, I had to take a sneak peek. Because he always sends okay. good stuff. Yeah. Uh, here's here's one that was in there that I'm excited about. It's a uh, George Washington presidential news conference. So it's yeah. a George Washington impersonator. Okay. And he's uh, going to do it. There, there he is. That's the guy. Yep. And so he's going to do a, a, a news conference. And I'm excited about that one. How about this All one? Right. Larry Larry Jennings. See, I thought I thought this was like, I thought Larry Jennings, I thought it was like, I don't know, an assassin or something. Or like, killer. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's like my middle that. name. No, he does uh, magic tricks. <laughs> <laughs> I can he assassinate gone, the good time. You could have gone with a better headshot, I, thought, I think. I'm yeah, like, I would have. I definitely would have. And this one I'm excited about, especially because Mask Me and Others coming up for. Uh, oh. Yeah, here's a Mask Maker. Well, it's Halloween's right around the corner, too. Exactly. So. So. All right. Good. Yeah. I got a couple to show. Um, well, we had so much fun showing off um, crafting videos last week so here's a couple of new ones uh we got can do crafts for kids and can do crafts for adults one so we're gonna see a lot more hopefully uh maybe some cows being milked things like crafts along those lines we'll find out uh, i haven't watched any of them yet but stay tuned it's gonna be good too cool too cool let's get into yeah. a found footage festival classic okay <laughs> Caught me with my pants down, but no one sells carpet or waterbeds for less. This is gonna be a fun show. We got uh, McKenna swinging by. She she edited a new video. She's gonna play a new video for us. I have a, a not tedious or tedious round. Uh, lots of fun stuff coming up. Well, plus it's the kickoff of Hunktober. This is our first uh, episode of uh, October. So uh, let's kick off Hunktober in style. We, we have a lot of videos involving hunks. Yeah, this one, uh, see, this one I feel like we have to play every time. This is California yeah. Big Hunks. This is like, I would say for Hunktober, this is like the, the uh, Star Spangled Banner, you know, like sports always, yeah. you know, they'll, they'll do that before they start a sports game. We start this before Hunktober. So we're going to play a little bit from the California Big Hunks and uh, put your hand over your heart, over your peck and... <laughs> Oh, listening pectoral. Of course, it's the jungle hunk. Love the jungle hunk. I like my hunks a little bit more meat on their bones. A little more meat on their bones, you say? Yeah, yeah. This is the mating call of the hunk, right? of the jungle hunk. Okay. This is how they find their mates. I love those underwear. I know he wanted that reveal to be sexy, but it's kind of alarming. Like, look at speaking of serial killer. I mean, that guy's. I've seen him at the meetings. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite because they, they chose a church basement yeah. <laughs> as the location here. Yeah, you know it smells like casserole down there. Yeah, it? yeah, yeah. Baked, baked goods from the yeah. bake sale. Yeah. That's my favorite song. That seemed right. to be the move, kind of. You know, we've got the uh, males in motion and other, and it just sort of seemed to be that sort of like uh, thrusting gesture was popular back in the day. I think it's still popular to this Is day. With, well, with like, you know, stripper hunks. I think that that's the move, right? The humping. Are there still stripper hunks? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, Pippendales is gone. Um, no, I was at some bar in like Wausau, Wisconsin, and they had like ladies night. And they oh, had like okay. all these guys dressed as, you know, it was a poster that was up in the. And when I, when I used to work on, on Bridezilla's and then they sent me out every single shoot, I'd have to go to some sort of male strip club. And that wasn't too, too long ago. Yeah. Would and they was... do the thrust move, Steve? From what I remember, yeah, I think that was very popular. <laughs> okay. All right. 
I stand corrected. Steve, <laughs> Steve was searching his brain for that. He's like, thrust, yes, there was, there was yeah. a thrust emotion. They would do that. that. Yeah. Now that you mentioned it, yeah. I guess was. that's, guys, that's, that's a, their entire bag of tricks is like, okay, I can do a little bit of a thrust thing, I guess. I mean, but what else are they going to do? That should you turn know? somebody on, I guess. Shouldn't um, it be Thrust-tober? Oh. Um, You're thinking of Thrust-vember. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's a entirely yeah. different thing, but yeah. uh, oh, that's right. They got rid of daylight savings and it moved back. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It's going to be a robust thrust member, though. Stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Um, Steve, who are you selling out to? I heard you got a new computer, by the way. By the way, is that going to help did, flubbing? So, uh, it's not going to help my flubbing. That's why I've called myself the uh, human car crash. This, um, but uh, we'll get into that later. The new computer, but let me while I'm on it, let me sell out. So this week I am selling out to Melinda. Ken McGarry, who wants to promote his YouTube channel, Surprise Restaurant Chat. It's him making quick and informative insights about the restaurant industry based on his book, The Surprise Restaurant Manager, which is available at most online booksellers and also on Audible. Uh, it's a passion project for him. He's a guy who spent most of his life in restaurants and bars. Um, think of him as John Taffer, if he looked like Billy Joel and didn't yell at people like an asshat. Those are his words. Um, I could see a little Billy Joel in the yeah, uh, thumbnail there. So. Sure. I, I've watched a ton of these videos before, um, and I actually found it really informative. I'm not someone who works in restaurants, but I work with a lot of you know freelance people, so I felt like it's it's I don't want to say surprisingly informative, but surprisingly informative for somebody who's not in the restaurant industry. Why is it called Surprise Restaurant? Like, what's the surprise part? So it's his book was called surprise restaurant manager because you know many people in the industry were originally bartenders or servers and when they're asked to lock up one night then the next week they have to place a liquor order and all of a sudden you're a restaurant manager so you know you were oh, one day you were you know a bartender it. and then a couple weeks later surprise you're the restaurant manager with zero training it. oh it happens cool. a lot yeah did anybody work in restaurants here i waited tables right out of high school in high school, I was a uh, a short order cook, and then later I was a bartender. Oh, yeah, short order cook, really? It sounds better. It was oh. at Papa Gino's, and so we had very limited things on the menu. And the microwave was probably our biggest. Uh, <laughs> oh, can you, you imagine know. eating food that's served to you by Steve? Like Steve had <laughs> over to you. I, I would not. Lots of flubs in the food. Yeah, there were, there were, there were a lot of flubs. Um, so, uh, didn't you do like magic tricks and stuff, or? You had a Ooh. patter, didn't you, when you were a uh, server? Me? I, yeah, you had some, oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. go-to. Yeah. Well, I happened to be going through my magic phase at the time, too. So I uh -huh. always brought my fake thumb. I had uh, right. you know, my okay. levitation act. Yeah, yeah, I pulled out all the bells and whistles. <laughs> didn't increase the tips at all, but uh, well, it, it made was me in feel Wisconsin, like... so, you know. That's true. Right. It made me feel like a magician, <laughs> though, so. Where did you work? Uh, Liberty Station in Milton, Wisconsin. Oh, I yeah. think you've heard of been there? <laughs> no, I... Oh, you got to go for the prime rib real right. good. Um, um, before before I pass things over, I just want to tell everybody that um, there's a video on the YouTube channel about how to get a copy of this ebook for free. Ken's happy to give it to anybody who asks, and he even gave us a copy and permission to distribute. So feel free to hit me up. But uh, please check out Surprise Restaurant Chats and uh, please give it a follow as it helps with the algorithms and support the millennials that support us. Exactly. Exactly. Well, Let's uh, support our ongoing segment, uh, Scimitar. It's time for Scimitar, everybody. This one's topical because uh, the NFL season is in full swing. So I uh, found a Scimitar that is called Brett Favre, the Field General. Um, Brett Favre, our hometown quarterback for many years. Uh, I was at his first game that he came in as a Green Bay Packer. And uh, he's not problematic at all, it's my understanding. Nope. Everything nope. is just Everything's fine. Everything's on the up and up. Nope. Legacy's nope. intact. <laughs> uh, and, but somehow I think Scimitar lucked out with this video because it was made in 1996. And then he won the Super Bowl. So it was kind of, they tacked on a little thing saying, and he won the Super Bowl a year later. But it was clearly like shot before that. So um, here he is giving some tips about um, various uh, stances and ways you should hold the football. All right. All Pro Sports presents Brett Favre, MVP quarterback. An explosive look at how the league's best quarterback plays the game. Brett Favre takes you inside the fundamental skills that make him the best, along with the help of Green Bay Packers center Mike Flanagan. 
that's gonna Brett. that's gonna move some copies. You got Mike Flanagan in there. Oh, if you got Flanagan in there, you're doing all right. All pro center. Come on. I want to show you what it takes to be a leader on the football field. The quarterback center exchange is an extremely important part of each offensive play. Ooh, Dutch angle. Your hand should be positioned under the center's crotch. They have to you feel that keep on their the balls. Heels of your they? hands and thumbs together. Like on their teeth and balls. Yeah. Yeah, that's what you do it, Steve. You were Steve. You were a quarterback in college. I was right. I was, uh, yeah, high school and then college. And you put your hand right up in there, don't so you? So usually they'd wear a cup or some sort of thing to tuck things away. But then you know, on like practices where you're just shorts, then there were there were things you didn't want to do. <laughs> well, and they they talk about this too because like they say you should apply some pressure. So they want you should feel it because that's when you know they're ready to snap it and where to place the ball. So. It's pretty intimate. Fills of your hands and thumbs together with your fingers extended and spread open. The forefinger of your throwing hand should be in the middle of the center's crotch. <laughs> Push up with enough pressure so the center knows where to snap the ball. It is the funniest part of the sport. Yeah. Position your bottom hand so your thumbs are together and your fingers are Have extended. Have your buddy put his hands in like this. This provides your center inside. with the opening he needs to place the ball into your hands. If you practice these techniques, you too can become an outstanding quarterback. Yeah, that was the only funny part of the video. Yeah. The rest had actually a lot of old Packer highlights that I kind of got into. So I, uh, <laughs> I, it was a scimitar video that I mostly enjoyed, actually. But uh, I think it was one of those things where they hide all logos. Like, you never saw a Packer logo in that whole thing. Yeah, but they did license some uh, NFL highlights, which I was surprised about. I, I thought maybe yeah. they just use old high school footage. You know? I don't know. But, I always wonder what scimitar. I wonder if they're like, eh, nobody will notice. Yeah, well, uh, it was, yeah, they lucked out with that one because the next year he was MVP. And I think that probably sold more copies than most videos by our friends at uh, Scimitar. Um, hey, we are on tour right now. Our fall tour has begun next week. A week from today, we will be going to Athens, Georgia, Atlanta. Then we'll be going up to uh, North Carolina, Charlotte, Asheville, uh, Raleigh. And then, oh, oh, by the way, we're going to be playing Chop and Steel at the All Rise Film Festival in Cleveland on October 16th at Cleveland State. It's this uh, it's like a social justice uh, film festival, and they're going to kick things off with Chop and Steel. And then Nick and I are going to come out. Nick, I didn't tell you this, but um, I talked to the director of the festival and she goes, she goes, hey, I saw your show at Cleveland. And she goes, are you going to be doing the same kind of stuff uh, for your post show? Uh, performance, and I asked because we're gonna have faculty members there, and we're, the dean is gonna be there, Ooh. and a lot of professors are gonna the be trusty there. Trusty old dean. Yeah, and I was like, I was like, I was trying to get what she was talking about, but I think we probably showed dongs in that. I think that's oh. what she was getting at. So yeah. I was like, oh no, no, we won't show dongs at this if you don't want us to show dongs. She was kind of tiptoeing around it. I see. All right, yeah. tiptoeing yeah. around the dongs. Yeah, there will be no dongs at this particular performance. All the other ones. Sorry, Tons Cleveland. Yeah. 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 Sorry to disappoint you. Especially we showed enough dogs in Cleveland. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but we'll make up for it next time. We're, I think we're back in January at the Grog Shop, and they'll be, we'll, we'll make up for it. We'll, we'll do an all dong show just yeah. to make up for it. Yeah. But hey, speaking of Chop and Steel, we also, when we were in Austin, we picked up uh, a bunch of limited edition posters from Deadly Prey Gallery, the crazy um, Ghana uh, based artists that, uh, and they made a poster for Chop and Steel. It's on this like really high quality paper. And we have like, I think look at 30, this. We have 35 of them left, I think. So yes. that's it. This is uh this is slick. Um, and look at there's vibrant colors. Steel. Yep, a lot of Nick Pruer on it. Yep, um, I, that's why I like it. Yep. And then we got Marty in there. And then <laughs> what's what's that thing up up? Look at the top right up there. They just kind of threw in that. I don't remember that part of the movie with the uh this part. Remember, here. Yeah. Remember That's the snake that came off. out of the skull that uh, at the on the bottom there? Remember that part of the movie? Well, yeah, I remember that part. Yeah, but yeah. I don't remember the uh, fang <laughs> monster. Um, anyway, well, the, yes, limited this, edition, right? This is it, and then yeah, we're, we we're not we, making more. We were right. We were giving them only to Patreon backers, but now that week long window is open, they scooped up a lot of them. But what we have left is there. So Can we show this. Are we allowed to show this too? Yeah, the VHS version of Chop and Steel. That's this will be now. on sale in, in uh, on tour, and then in uh, November we'll have more of them. So yeah. yeah, look at that slick lunch meat did it. 
so you know it's good. Um, yeah, so we'll have that pretty soon. Yeah. Um, all Exciting right. Exciting stuff. How about we get into some flying windows? We've got to. Let's do it. Okay. There's an Instagram page called uh, WOC uh, Archive. You guys follow them? Uh-uh. No, I, I happen upon them all the time. Yeah, the they're from Canada, and uh, they have some great stuff. Yeah, like old commercials, like you're saying, George. And uh, this one is just chock full of flying windows. In fact, they put that in the description, almost baiting us into showing it. So what am I going to do? Do they watch so, the show? Does WOC yeah. do they? Okay. Yeah. This fall, CKVR oh, sparkles with classic Heavily entertainment. Border. Yeah. That's good flying window music right there. <laughs> it's just relentless, too. It's a little too fast for my taste. You know, I'm, you know I'm conservative when it comes to flying windows. Right. Packs of life. I'm a staunch conservative. Oh, we should have a quiz about all these shows after. Yeah. All the bargain basement shows that we could license cheaply. They're on Me TV now. Danger Bay looks cool. Tag weekend. Look at that's this fall. This might be my song for the Toad Heavy Tournament. It's good. And uh, so thank you to the WOC Archive on Instagram. I gotta follow the WOC Archive. Give those guys uh a follow it's uh yeah always good stuff and uh yeah those are a lot of flying windows just relentlessly coming at you um all right should we get into some raviolis bring on mckenna yeah let's do it all right come on let's see your raviolis shows 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 your raviolis Welcome, McKenna. Hi. Uh, hey. Hey. All right. You got a brand new. Oh, first of all, McKenna Grubchild, aka Grubchild. That's how we first knew McKenna. Uh, McKenna works here at uh, VCR Party Headquarters Archive. You basically do everything. Oh my gosh! Thank you. Including mopping up because we had a flood in New York, and our we we're in a real our office is in a real low lying area. And we were panicking because we were like, our precious VHS tapes, what's happening to them? What was the scene down there? Oh, um, there was some water sneaking in, uh, but we got it all mopped up and all the VHSs and the Spaced Invaders uh, cut out. Yeah. They, the they made it. Sandy. They made it. Yeah. Okay. Shoot. Somebody posted this on, um, uh, this is what it was like right outside of our office. This is the door. This is normally a street. That. That's a street. Drive. It's like up to your knees. There's our office right there. This is a river, basically. Uh, yeah, we've had it insane. before. Where like you see like little streams coming down the hallway. So we're we're pretty good about keeping things in plastic on the floor. But yeah, that spaced invaders uh, cut out. I know Nick was worried sick about. I that was. It's so. like a child to me. And yeah. by the way, if you want to help us protect our VHS tapes, you can always support there the work go. we do at uh, Patreon.com/slash Found Footage Festival. Uh, we pay McKenna for her her help uh and uh and also you've been finding some great videos too right yeah so most recently i found this video called women at large it's an exercise video and i have it right the here enthusiasm level throughout this video i never could have expected the level of enthusiasm <laughs> they're bringing um i watched the really clip something. i watched the clip and they're definitely enthusiastic here it is if you can put a uh one shot on me here, Steve. Steve, are you directing? Working on... Yes. Okay, there we go. Yeah, here's women at large. We have a couple women at large videos. Mm -hmm. I think this is part of a series here. So, um, yeah, in this edit, it's short and sweet, and uh, I like it a lot. Here we go. McKenna's cut of women at large. Okay, I haven't seen this. Women at large is a totally new concept in fitness, proving you can be large and be physically fit. Now meet your women at large instructors. Hi, I'm Charlene Powell. My blood pressure is 132, <laughs> over 76. My heart rate is 60, and I feel fantastic. I want that sweatshirt. Woo! Her, her Woo! blood pressure, I know blood pressure because I have high blood oh, pressure. That, that's pretty decent. 
blood pressure oh. right there. 132 right. over 76. That's that's decent. All right. So that's how we should come onto the show in the future. <laughs> What's that? Oh, that's how we should come onto the show in the future. Hi, <laughs> I'm McKenna. My blood pressure is 176 <laughs> over 22. Over 22. And I'd like to thank Dr. Zussman. <laughs> That's our orthodontist. All right, let's watch the enthusiasm here of the women at large. Okay. Woo! 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 Way up high! Woo! 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 If we can be of any further help to you, please call 509-965-0115. It's a long distance call. Do we need to add that to our ending? <laughs> Look at... <laughs> like... <laughs> An awkward ending, McKenna. You're you've got the touch already. Yeah. You know, I, you know what my Thank favorite? You. One of my favorite things might be in video now is the looking off to the side eye. Mm -hmm. The the woman on the left, she's looking right into the camera. The woman off to the side is looking at like the director or somebody. Cute. I card, love yeah. I love looking off to the sides. It's my new favorite thing. So, well done, McKenna. Thank I might you. have a couple looking off to the sides as well tonight. I oh, and yeah. I'm gonna yeah. I'm going to say I have never been more excited about two videos. I've, the two in, that I'm going to show tonight, they're related uh, in different ways, and I'm thrilled about both of them. They're both candidates for video of the year for me. Let's play one. Okay. First one is a video that I believe Bob Hedges sent to us called Fireworks Video Wait, Did we magazine. lose McKenna? Uh, oh, McKenna I guess if I, if I go to... Uh... Uh, one shots, yeah, it might not be on. Oh, okay. Yeah, she's still here. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is Fireworks Video Magazine, and it's a promotion. They, I don't think they ever followed through with it, but this Fireworks Trade Magazine, um, they had two hosts who were in the industry. And so if you're in the fireworks industry, you could subscribe to this quarterly VHS magazine where they would keep you up to date on trends and latest products in the fireworks industry. And uh, it's hard to, uh, you know, just invent charisma. You just have to have it. And so I, both of my clips tonight are related in that they involve dynamic hosting duos. So I'm going to ask you to decide which duo is better. Wait, uh, wait, uh, one question. Is, is mm -hmm. Are these hunks? No, not hunks. This is not hunk related. Oh, I this thought it was is, hunktober. Well, that's why we started with uh, California Big Hunks. Okay. Uh, but uh, what, what do we have? What's what's the challenge here? Uh, you have to decide which duo is better. The duo from Fireworks Video Magazine or the clip I'll show after this. OK. OK, here we go. Solid font. Hi, I'm Jack Drews, editor of American Fireworks News. And I'm Donnie Drews, co-editor of American Fireworks News. Welcome to the Fireworks Video Magazine. Wait, didn't we? Haven't you played them before? No, we, wa we watched it live during an unboxing, but we couldn't really hear it. <laughs> That's right. And I, I earmarked it. I'm like, I'm grabbing that video. McKenna, I believe you digitized this for me uh, last week, so I'm excited that we can finally get to see it. I feel like uh, Fireworks videos have a very high batting average. You know, you had that one of the... Uh with that one woman in that warehouse. Yeah. And we had another pyrotechnics. one. Pyrotechnics. Pyrotechnics, yeah. They're, they're good. All right, here we go. Yeah, I think that's what uh, Bob must have had a search up for, you know, fireworks videos, and right. this one delivers. It's vital to every businessman to keep up to date on the events around the world that affect his business. It's especially important for people in the fireworks trade. We'll even tell you some of the crazy things that happened in fireworks around the world. Nick, actually, Nick, I think this counts for Hunktober. Oh, yeah, good. Yeah. By the way, he'd be a good Halloween costume if everybody, if anyone on the panel here is still trying to decide. Some pretty big things happen in our fireworks world each year. We'll have a list of the really big events and tell you when to go, where to go, and who to contact. And we'll follow this up with a list contact? of events to make it easy for you. Ooh, yeah, there's a look aside. Yes. McKenna, could you go as Dottie here? Oh, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> McKenna, do you have your Halloween costume picked out yet? Or do you, do you know what you're going to do? For... No, but I mean, there are so many contenders in this episode. I know. Yeah. yeah. Maybe a couple's costume for people. 
who want to join our VCR party contest. What's the guy's name? Uh, I don't remember. Something and Dottie. Let me. Jack. Jack and, Jack and Dottie, Dottie okay. Drews. Okay. Here's special features. In each edition of the Fireworks Video Magazine, we'll have two special features that we think you'll find most interesting. We'll have the country's foremost collector, Dennis Pinocchio, giving us his views on a particular aspect of collecting. He's looking at him. Besides being curator of the 4th of July Americana and Fireworks Museum, Dennis is also the official historian of the American Pyrotechnics Association. We look forward to the unique contribution that Dennis will make to each edition of the magazine. Well, we do too. Yeah. You know, I suppose like <laughs> fireworks. <laughs> Hey, representation is important. So I think, uh, you know, you want to see yourself in the fireworks industry. I guess for if you're hosting a fireworks video, you let the fireworks be the razzle-dazzle. You don't have to be. Like, you can just kind of sit back. Don't you think? Or, or do you think you need to have razzle-dazzle? I think they can't help but be razzle-dazzle. But every fireworks video we've watched, like, they <laughs> don't have the razzle-dazzle. Yeah. Uh, well, agree to disagree on that. I okay. think they're a dynamic duo. Women in fireworks have a special place in this industry. They are no longer unique, but in all phases, from manufacturing to shooting and choreographing displays. Many are presidents of companies. An astronaut. They come in all ages, <laughs> colors, sizes, shapes, and talents. We hope to demonstrate that in future videos. We hope. We hope. We hope. Uh, not guaranteed. No promises here. Do you remember the time we were filming the setup at the display and they had a shell that wouldn't fit the pipe and a loader did something so simple and easy to make it fit? Oh, I sure do. And how about that <laughs> trip that we took to the consumer fireworks manufacturing plant where the manager showed us that special way but we made that love all night. space items for stability? Oh, yeah. And weren't we surprised when we found out that the Consumer Product Safety Commission is now recommending that technique for everyone? <laughs> oh, yeah. And how about that trick with the rubber bands that we learned at the display a couple of days ago? Whoa. Yeah. And then tried in the and sack. I really enjoyed finding out what a dead man switch is. Yeah, well, these are a couple of the hints and tips, the answers to which you'll find in the January Fireworks Video Magazine. But you got to subscribe. Oh, that's great. That's going to say pre Patreon. I'm going to say uh, Jack and Dottie are the better couple without even having seen your second video. Well, you just wait till I show you the Mermaids Illustrated dynamic <laughs> duo uh, coming up very shortly. There should be a fireworks corner called Pyrotech Nick. Oh, yes, because you have been finding good ones. So yeah. maybe that's your well, thing. That's two so far. Uh, hopefully, and I, uh, I don't know yeah. if you saw in the credits when the credits scrolled there. The uh, acting coach is actually Fergus from Sin of the City. Really? <laughs> He's actually, yeah, it was Fergus. He actually. gave him all the line reads and uh, yeah, eye contact exactly. tips. Okay. Until they got it right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. I got a little segment I haven't done in a while now. It's called Tedious or Tedious. Best corned beef I think I've seen for a long time. Okay. So here's where I show you two videos, or I, I show you just the, the cover of the video. Mm. Um, and you have to tell me whether the contents of it are uh, tedious or not tedious. This is the Exorcism Victory won by Bob Blarson. Here it is. Now, uh, Exorcism's obviously very exciting things. Um, we've all seen the movie. Classic horror movie, right? Exactly. And uh, but these videos, we have so many like satanic panic videos called like you know the, the devil's uh, playground or you know whatever. Yeah. Uh, and it's usually a guy sitting at a podium to a bunch of bored people in front of them talking right. about Satan. It's usually pretty boring. So what do you think? Is uh, is the Exorcism Victory Video 1 going to be tedious or not tedious? I'll say not tedious. Okay. I think I'm there might be some tedious. demonstrations. George, you're saying tedious? Yeah. I'm going not tedious. How can it be exor Exorcism be tedious? McKenna, I believe you've you digitized this for me. So did you watch it? I've seen it, yeah. Do you want to withhold a guess? or I, I've got to withhold. I okay. don't want to give it away. Okay. That's an ethical move on your part. <laughs> it's a great watch. Okay, here we go. Uncharacteristically ethical for this show. It is, yeah. It is. All right, here we go. 
what you are about to watch is something you probably have never. It is kind of look like Nick Pruer a little. No, bit. I know you're going to say that. It's, it's Nick. It's if Nick Pruer and Bill Burr had a baby. Oh, that's flat was... top from Dick Tracy. Well, I thought it would be if, if Nick Pruer went into Wall Street. Like I feel like that's where. <laughs> My hair is not that red. Wall Street, Your Nick head, Pruer. Your head is not that shape. No. He's no. he's really the Casey Kasem of of uh, religious videos, of exorcisms here. Um, <laughs> and I didn't show his whole preamble. McKenna, you probably remember this. But he has this preamble leading up to the what he's about to show. Um, and it's like 10 minutes long. And it's this. And I wanted to show it all, but it was just – it was way too tedious. I wanted to get to the meat and potatoes. So – um, all right, here, take it away, Nick. What you are about to watch is something you probably have never seen before. An exorcism. Spiritual warfare in action. Now prepare yourself. You are about to enter the world of spiritual warfare, where you are going to see an exorcism in action. A lady named Linda called my Hillary talk Clinton? show. I began praying with her. I, th I thought about demon spirits that as manifested. George's deathbed vision. I cast them out over the phone, over the air. You tell me exactly what I wish to know, or you will be smitten by the mighty angels of God that stand all about this room right now. You want to be smitten by the angels of God? Do you? What do you? Make me listen to the angels. I don't want to. So I'll just call upon the angels to sing. I pray right now the angels don't that surround that this room. Don't play that song. She likes. Don't play that oh, song. Oh, we'll play that song. Yes, we no, will. I don't Where's the want tape recorder? Give me that tape recorder. Let's hear this song. <laughs> I hope you've read my book in the name of A Satan. A little bit of understand. Monica in my life. What song is he talking? About? Exorcism number five. <laughs> look, look at the look where it's frozen. <laughs> I will say that lady had my haircut that I had in eighth grade. So it's a, also, I see a lot of myself in this video. There's a lot going on here, but like at least five times throughout this exorcism video, he breaks out of it and he does a voiceover and he says, be sure to pick up my book, uh, Satan's <laughs> Playground or whatever it's called. He, he plugs his book like five times in this. Yes, we no, are. I don't Where's the tape that? recorder? Give me that tape recorder. Let's hear this song. <laughs> I hope you've read my book in the name of Satan to understand how that is done. Now, more of the exorcism. Could we remix her to make her like headbanging to something there? Oh, you know, yeah. like put, put a cool song with it or something? Yeah. All right, we'll make that a challenge. Also, people. this guy is he's the Barnum and Bailey of of religious videos. Like he's really he's like the art bell of of uh, Christian mm. radio because on his show he'll do exorcisms and he does all the uh, all the cool stuff in religion. Okay. The exorcism. What is your name, spirit? What is your name? Tell me what your name is. Little Linda. What? Little Linda. Little Linda? Why do you call yourself Little Linda? She, she came, my friend. This is the first time in the exorcism we learn about Little Linda. You'll hear more about that later. I bind the spirit of Little Linda. I bind that spirit and command that he be restrained from my talking to Little Linda. Little Linda, come forward. Spirit of Little Linda, what is your name? You better not have me get out of her. Look at me, spirit. Are you the spirit that calls herself Little Linda? I'm oh, terribly you're terribly accented. It, it's really spirit. confusing, too, whether the demon is named Little Linda or if Little Linda's inside <laughs> of her. I think even he's confused by it. Yeah. yeah. I feel like it's like kind of an improv show where the, they're not on the same page. <laughs> right. They didn't yes and on that one. No. You. Of course you hate me because you hate the Jesus that's in me, hatred. I cut you off from poverty. I cut you off from hatred. You are now encircled by the word of He's God and faith. isolated right now. I put a ring of isolation around you right now that you may not Dungeons be receiving dragons. any help from anyone else. <laughs> Do you have any right to be there, spirit of little Linda? Do you? Do you? Look at me. Look at me, of little Linda. Look at me when I'm talking to you, little Linda. <laughs> Say it, the spirit of little Linda. Say claims. Say claims. Come out, spirit of little Linda. You do need to read my book in the name of Satan, because in there you will see how I often command demons often. to be cast out. Often. Now. Where? Wishbone! The PBS series? Oh, oh, I'm an evil spirit no, that has to be found. Kalalanga, Kilio, Kalalanga, Lalamandala, Halalangala, Kalalangala, Kalamanando. In the name of. In the name of who? I'm the one. 
Linda. You gave the mantras to her. Oh, she knows what I'm talking about. You, we isolate you totally by the word of God and by. <laughs> It's not, not tedious. All right. It's great. I think I'm going to buy the book and the Frisbee. Yeah, definitely. Yes. Uh, uh, all right. I, I want to buy a little Linda's record. I like really like that song that little Linda was singing at the end. Better than all right. Marcy. Well, I pitched this. This is um, Mermaid Illustrated. Let me see if I can. You can't really see it that well. Mermaids Illustrated. Now, a while back, we played a video called um, Random Clothed Mermaid Scenes. I don't know if you remember that. No. But that's what the name. It was called Random Clothed Mermaid Scenes. And it's by this company called Third Coast Productions that released, I guess, specialty, not fetish. Well, I guess it's sort of fetish videos, like specialty videos of like uh, women in like mermaid tales underwater you're on the mailing list you get the catalog exactly every month. so yeah. i got i got this mermaids illustrated i think this is another maybe it's a bob hedges one or we got it in the mail on an unboxing and uh it's hosted by another dynamic duo we'll see if they beat dotty and uh what's his name the dawes uh couple but uh I, I really like this couple i really like this video this might be a good bonus episode to watch for patrons also, great production logo. The news. Dan Rather posted. Hello, I'm Corbett Jackson. And I'm Lori Dillon. Welcome to Mermaids Illustrated. So many of you fans of mermaid movies have requested more in-depth information about the beautiful models that grace America. The Number guy's two last underwater names. Underwater glamour videos. <laughs> yeah, and this is the dialogue there. So many mermaid video fans have wrote in and wanted to know more about the beautiful models who grace the videos. Like, what, back, back it up. I want to hear. What film? Like, what publication is he a film critic for? And or yeah, I look a little like this. I look a little like Corbin. Yeah, you do. <laughs> I, I didn't want to be the. So many of you fans of mermaid movies have requested more in-depth information about the beautiful models that grace America's number one underwater glamour videos. We decided to open the vault at Third Coast, Bennett Studios, and let you enjoy a collection of our most beautiful models and exciting film clips. I, I bet he right. loved Splash. Yeah, well, it might be too mainstream for uh, Corbett Jackson. I don't know. We'll see. Uh -huh. He's a discerning critic. So you will learn a lot more about each of the beautiful ladies in mermaid movies. For instance, the popularity of the mermaid movies has now developed into full-blown feature-length productions. Soon to be released as Smuggler's Daughters, an exotic romp through the Old West, Central America's mysterious jungle, and what we are most famous for, diving scenes beneath the Blue Caribbean. That's right, Lori. Exotic romp is a vivid description. The feature stars Nicole Dernenberg, whom you loved on the popular television series Silk Stalking, the beautiful penthouse model Kelly Weil, and champion horsewoman Lisa Buteau. Lisa's video <laughs> Mermaid in Paradise zoomed to bestseller status in the most recent Bennett Group catalog. And all three of these gorgeous ladies generate tremendous amounts of fan mail. Speaking of gorgeous, I understand that you will be appearing in a mermaid movie. Any chance of seeing a sneak preview before the end of the show? <laughs> Corbett, you stinker. That was supposed to be a surprise. <laughs> but yes, oh, I will. I love the ocean and <laughs> But yes, I will. She just immediately <laughs> relents. Corbett, you stinker. He is a little rascal. He is. I didn't know he was going to spring that on Lori. Show. Corbett, you stinker. That was supposed to be a surprise. But yes, I will. I love the ocean and travel. I just can't wait to get in the water with our camera crew. I hope you will like my movie as much yeah. as you have the others. I know I will love doing it for you. Okay. Smuggler's Daughters is 90 minutes of tongue-in-cheek filled grown-up fun. <laughs> Directed by Manny Esquivel, the film pays teasing tribute to some of the world's most famous directors, teasing past tribute. and present. Listen to the music, watch the action from Smuggler's Daughters, and see if you can pick out the directorial figure that inspired the scene. Well, Laurie, how about Sergio Leone? Poor, but there you go, ruining another surprise. <laughs> but I think the odds are pretty good that you hit the nail on the head. Tell us about the next segment, Corbett. It'll be a real pleasure. That's Joan Laurie's Howard and Tia on a secluded beach in a scene from Mermaids of the Aztec Empire. Did you know that Laurie Pallet starred in Universal Pictures Screwball Hotel? I certainly do. <laughs> <laughs> you 
Let's make it a jam. Oh, this is like this. Yeah. No, we haven't forgotten about Smuggler's Daughters. Not to worry. <laughs> Here are some of the revealing footage we promised. <laughs> this is like the end of Smuggler's Daughters there. I hope you enjoyed Mermaids Illustrated. If you don't already own a collection, why not order one or all for your video library today? You can order by calling toll free one eight hundred seven three three eight eight six two. All right, who's the more dynamic duo? Is it Corbett and Laurie? Who would win in a host off? Mm. Like if they went he- if they went head to head in a host off and they tried to like out host each other. Yeah, who would win? I got my money on Jack and Dottie. Easy, really. They pull- well, just because they're older. Corbett's and they have more, more playful experience. though. They have a bit more. Uh... He's a rascal. But they, they have the, the they're older and they have they're wiser and they know how to host and there's just that chemistry that they had, mm-hmm. the dynamic they had. Yeah, I guess I just uh, I'm a sucker for uh, that stinker Corbett, the film critic. So I guess I'd put my money on them. But you're right, the Dawes have more experience. So I don't know, it'd be a real who's the hosting us? I think Wait, that's uh, <laughs> was that the mermaid video? Was that is that part of a series or was that just a one off? It, it it was a like a, a promo of. I don't know if they continue to do this, but it was like uh, spotlighting titles in their collection. And not to complain, but Smuggler's Daughters had zero mermaids in it. It was just oh, topless really? women in Western scenes. And mermaid. also, Nick, not to complain, but uh, I don't know. This is feeling more like baby worry to me than Hunktober. Yeah, I, I knew that uh, that would be lobbied against me, but I thought the one-two combo of Fireworks uh, magazine and Mermaid magazine just had to go together. So, although Jack and Corbett, I think they qualify as hunks. So, I think you're, I think you're barely in the. Clear. In my book, they do. Yeah. Yep. And Bob Larson too. He's also a hunk. Yeah. Um, Nick Pruer, Bill Burr. Um, yep. All right, I got one more. Uh... Tedious or tedious. tedious? Best corned beef I think I've seen for a long time. Okay. All right. Here's what we got. Here we got this one. This is a DVD. We're not proud to show DVDs, but we'll show yeah. them occasionally. It's one of those thin ones too, so you know mm. it's kind of homemade. Yeah. This is a flagpole dedication. Okay, flagpole dedication. Now it looks like it's going to be tedious for sure, but will you read this poll quote at the top? Two thumbs up. You you simply can't stop watching. <laughs> <laughs> So, at a cemetery, a, a cemetery flag dedication. <laughs> There's no name attached to it of any nope. kind. Yeah. <laughs> Was no, that no film critic Corbin Jackson who said that? <laughs> well, yeah, and they have the beginning of the quote, the use of quotation mark, but they don't have it at the end of the quote. Of the I guess quote. it just means it's going. Still, yeah, it's still happening. <laughs> yep. So, what do you think? Do you think that this? Uh, do you think Corbett is right? Uh, is he going to be right about that, or is this going to be a boring flagpole dedication? Topless flag dedication. I'm going to say tedious. I'm going to say. Okay. George. Yeah. I mean, if there's a scene where the flagpole falls on a, on a group of Cub Scouts, that would be not tedious. But I'm, I'm going to have to say tedious. If again. that were the case, you simply couldn't stop watching. Yeah. <laughs> uh, McKenna, you don't know this one. I, 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 don't, I don't know this one. I'm hoping for not tedious. I mean, I want it to be so exciting. Okay. All right. You're I'm going to gamble on the. In the flagpole uh, falling and go not tedious. Okay. Not Interesting tedious. gambit. Right. Okay. Here we go. The gambling man. That's how it starts. Pretty, pretty excited so far. Yeah, you got a drum corps. Yeah, you got Cinema Productions, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Cinema Productions is your production company, so you know All it's right. going to be good. Mount Hill Cemetery Memorial Day, 2009. We got to go to the cemetery in Ohio. Oh, we should. Okay, this park is a little bit boring, but it's the treasure of the cemetery. <laughs> oh, there are Boy Scouts. Yep. On behalf of the Mound Hill Cemetery Board of Trustees, it is our pleasure to welcome you to the Mound Hill Cemetery. We gratefully acknowledge the memorial gift given by the Daryl E. M. Bland Fund to underwrite Oh, they gratefully acknowledge the cost that. of the symbol of American freedom. Look at the fidgeting Boy Scouts. There's a lot of fidgeting in the background. There's also a lot of coughing. Mm. The, the cameraman, I think, had a had a bad cough, and so did everybody else in attendance. So I just, rather than showing you more of the video, I just thought I'd show you all the coughs that right. happened during it, and then you can see what happens at the podium during all the cough scenes. All right. The memory of the. 
daughter of Otis Culver <coughs> Miller, Bill's founder, the living flag, left over to go upstairs to see it. <coughs> and, uh, for a second term, mother, my companion, <coughs> here. <coughs> Aaron, the fair, James, the Korean War. Oh, I am tedious. Yep, it was tedious. It was very tedious. It was one of those edits where I'm, I'm editing it i'm like what am i it was one of those what am i doing with my life uh edits <laughs> where i'm like watching a full long hour flagpole dedication and trying to find the coughs and there's like 78 of them in there i actually did a good down. job yeah. we now present you with tuberculosis on behalf of a grateful nation <laughs> i think the only people who care about flagpole dedications are cub scouts and like old guys generally i think yeah there's the- they did do a 21 gun salute, and I was hoping they'd do a 21 cough salute. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but they, uh, yeah, it was guns though, so that part was kind of exciting. But all right, that's a good. Uh, I think I was two for two on the uh, tedious not. Did tedious you get it right? Week. Yeah, I think wow, I did. You're yeah, good at this game. I like how you're watching a two hour flag ceremony, and I'm having the time of my life watching Mermaids <laughs> Illustrated. I just had the best time this I, afternoon. I mean, I, I do it to myself. So, yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, that's a show uh, for Ravioli. Thank you, right? McKenna, for joining us. Great Thanks. video. Nice work. Thanks. And See you later. Thanks. Let's get into some cyber videos, shall we? want to get more of bob larson's videos that was that was a really good video that one was actually yeah really, it was tough to edit because there's a lot of great scenes in there uh, yeah that could this, be expanded into something this that could maybe... be a standalone edit but there's also two more volumes of him with little linda Ooh. for a while he calls the uh little linda hatred because she said i have hatred and he goes your name is hatred and then but she oh, didn't respond confused. to that and he's, yeah so he's calling her hatred for a long time um yeah, that could be. Yeah, I mean, it kind of reminds me of that video of the woman who channels the uh, ancient spirits. It's like yeah. people like who are. I, guess, I am the Tibetan. Yeah, like who want who are like failed actors and actresses, and they yeah. they're kind of channeling it using Satanism yeah. or well, channeling. This guy's whole thing, Bob Larson's whole thing, was like rock and roll Satanism. Like mm. I think we have some of his rock and like anti rock and roll videos yeah. over here. I'm gonna dive in for sure. Bob Larson's my new favorite. Neatly trimmed uh, orange beard. And he looks like Nick Crower. No, he does not. Well, no. just because he's so neatly trimmed with an orange beard. I'm I mean, not, I'm not neatly trimmed. Put your face right up to the camera. <laughs> yeah, you're you're a real shaggy. You're just a real uh, hippie. Now. Uh, it's, it's not it's perfectly like I've seen no, no, you, like, he's I've seen you this... like cut the use the razor on that. You like go in there and just like you spend like a half hour going and every little nook and cranny. That's what that guy. That's what Bob Larson does. That's not what I do. He he's using <laughs> like a one. He's using like a one, so it's like an orange stubble. I I'm like at a three. So yeah, well, weigh in. Who has <laughs> do I have a neatly trimmed beard or not? I think uh, <laughs> it's like perfectly like it's like drawn on. It is not drawn on. No, I'm not Bob Larson. Um, <laughs> I'm, Bob Larson. <laughs> I'm just me. Uh, all right. I got a video that is from another Instagram that I love. Christian Nightmares. I think everybody follows them, right? They, they harvest a lot of great, not only VHS stuff, but modern day content. That's yes. uh, usually from like some weird Christian music video. This one looked to be like um, a song parody by two youngsters uh, who were trying to incorporate jesus uh but appeal to modern sensibilities and uh i loved it here we go oh no you need jesus turn this off all right no i love how it's squished yeah this is my jam (laughs) oh i'm embarrassed already (laughs) i'm bringing jesus back yeah these atheists don't know how to act. Yeah. I think Satan better watch his back. Yeah. Backwards hat. So just keep praising him and don't you slack. Yeah. 
Take him to the cross. The Bible. Take him to the cross. <laughs> you see these verses, that's how I got saved. The Holy Ghost is what I crave. It's just that Jesus makes me feel this way. Take him to the cross. Come here, child, cause Jesus wants you to come to the cross where he bought you. G-O-D, now you can see. Pray for me, I'll pray for thee. See who you hanging with? Go ahead, be going with them. Look at those sins, now it's forgiven. He'll make you smile, go ahead, welcome them. Come here, child, don't be wild. Get your bowing out, we gotta go to church. Get your bowing out, we gotta go to church. There it Ooh, is. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Powerful. Hard to get through, but I thought that's what traffic in. It's things that are hard to get through. It so. really is. I mean, look at my body language. I I, <laughs> I scrunch up whenever that happens. Yeah. Everyone, I got physically uncomfortable watching it. That's why I knew it needed to be shown. So thanks to Christian Nightmares. I don't know where they got it, but well well curated, well done. Um, that's pretty good. I'm not doing I Am Jesus Week. I'm doing Songer. It's uh, the first mm-hmm. of the month. Uh first uh, tuesday of the month so i get to do a little songer tim sent me my fi- this might be the best of all the songers that i've been doing songers for what like seven years now eight yeah years? i think it's been seven or eight years yeah um this is a two sides of daniel songer daniel songer of course is the internet comedian he's on youtube he has over 200 uh, comedy acts he does them around his house this one is called two sides of daniel songer because you, you you will see two sides you'll see like this poetic you know, inspirational guy, but then you also see the the raunchy comedian. So uh, here it is, Tim's uh, latest. Two sides of Daniel Songer. (laughs) Side one. I will honor you, I will obey you, and I will cherish your love. Take my hand and make my life complete in holy matrimony, and we will radiate with a magical light throughout eternity, and our star will shine high above. Side two. Hey, look, (laughs) girls. I'm on the rag. I'm on the rag. Hey, look. We got something in common. I'm on the rag. I'm on the rag. This has been two sides. I mean, of a Daniel third Sonner. grader would think that and then reject it. A third grader would be like, no, that doesn't. That's just too stupid. <sighs> wow. It might be the best one so far. That one uh, is so the good. Juxtaposition, <laughs> the juxtaposition really nails it. I've yeah. watched it like six times, and it just makes me <laughs> laugh every single time. We got to do uh, our songathon. Remember, we, we actually raised money for a charity, a lot of money for a charity. We did, yeah. Last the, time. Uh, and we a did woman's the, foundation in Atlanta, yeah. We did the odd ones last time. We still got to do the evens. So, mm-hmm. um, Well, see. all the uh, good work we did for women by representing them in the fireworks industry was uh, taken away by Daniel Songer's uh, it, it, uh, yeah, evil really side. Was. Yeah. Uh, all right, sorry, George, Sergeant Steve? Curtis. Yeah, what do you guys have? Uh, let's see. I have a PSA from 1976 about littering in Tennessee. Um, it's called Tennessee Trash. It has a great jingle. Mm-hmm. So we'll watch that, but then there is sort of a sequel to it that has a lot of sound effects that I thought Joe would like. All right. Love sound effects. He's a little bit of you, he's a little bit of me. The trash along the roads out of Tennessee. He's the garbage that we find. He's the dream we left behind. Lord there ain't no lower class than yeah. Tennessee trash. We have met the enemy, and he is us. (laughs) That is a great slogan. Wow. Because it's true. Who is making this awful mess? Tennessee trash messing up the highway. Now somebody ought to do something. This is a man's job, Elvira. I'm making a citizen's arrest. Tennessee trash. 
I'm making people of Tennessee look that great. How in tarnation can you mess up pretty countryside like this? Where's your Tennessee pride? <laughs> I'm gonna get the judge to throw go. you in the pocket. Why, I know you. You're little Rupert. I have known your lovely mother since 1937. Be nice to our visitors and to your neighbors. Keep Tennessee clean and beautiful. So, yeah, as far as trafficking in, in Southern stereotypes, I think they really they really nailed it. And it's a source of pride for everyone in Tennessee. Yeah, Whether they you're are trash are or not hazard. trash. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I kind of wish Neat Pete would have showed up at the end and <laughs> told him not to litter as well. Did a little I, shuffle. I bet, like, uh, Hee Haw was really popular around then, you know, because it really had a Hee Haw vibe to it. Yeah. Uh, with the, yeah. Yeah. Um, but but everybody, uh, according to that PSA in Tennessee, everybody's like a yokel. Yeah, well, I, I figure everybody from like an hour west of New York to an hour east of L.A., the entire country is whatever that is. Right. Whatever I just saw. Hillbilly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's get into some uh, jock shams. Do you have the intro ready? I'm ready. Okay. It's a jock sham, jock sham, jock sham, jock sham. Boring you with a signature draw. It's a jock sham, jock sham, jock sham, jock sham. This rap is done. No, it's over to you. So this week's jock sham. I wish I um was clever like George because I think this one would have led itself perfectly to one of his game shows where mm. you have to do because like it is so insane what they end up doing, and. Um, I just want to see if you guys have ever seen this and then if you can figure out why. So I'll start off. It is a uh, commercial for the NBA's All-Star Game uh, to vote in it. And it is a fun play on the classic Mean Joe Green uh, Coke commercial. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I just I still can't believe they did this. Um, And I'm especially curious to see what George's reaction is going to be. All right. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted you to know I think you're the greatest. Yeah, sure. No, really, you're the best big man in the league. Okay, kid. I voted for you to be an all-star again. Okay, see ya. Hey, kid. Catch. Wow, thanks, buddy. Text it, tweet it now. <laughs> What? What? <laughs> now, I'm not sure if you can see. That was but, awesome. Even the font's right. He is uh, throws his sweaty headband yeah. at him and, and then so... gets it right in the kid's face. And then the kid reaches out with his tongue first to try to see if he can taste it. <laughs> oh, I didn't see sweat. the tongue part. Uh, oh, yeah. He, he does with goes the tongue. To see if you can taste it. And like, if you look on right over, I don't know if you can see my uh, cursor here. But there is sweat right around the lip. Mm-hmm. And then what? eventually wipes it all off. Yeah, oh, after yeah. another, yeah, trying to taste it a little. And bit when more. it hit him, it made kind of a. Yeah, yeah I, no. I did. Think, I was like a little bit subtler than Joe's, uh, you know, S- sound effects. But did you add still, that? Sound no. Effect? Oh, nope. That generally what they did. I think they were going for the laughs or trying to get people to talk about it. But I mean, what a disgusting. It wasn't enough about. though. It wasn't over the top enough. He should have been like drenched after he mm-hmm. hit him. You know what I mean? Like, and then no. but the the licking with the sweat with his tongue. He, I don't know. That's it's like a little weird, I'm right? Disturbed by that jock sham. Yeah, Perfect that's parody of Mean Joe Green down to the down to the font at the angle at the end. Yeah, I love so it. I, I rewatched the commercial. It was great. Like they they nailed the. If you watch the uh, original Mean Joe Green, like essentially it's the same thing. But he just throws his old um, jersey, jersey to him. Yeah. It does not hit the kid in the face. <laughs> there is no bodily fluids exchanged. Like it's I it's can't considerably tell if it's brilliant. It's or... in his face. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, all right. I loved it. I like it. There you go. Yeah. Thanks to uh, Michael Baker for sending that one in. Nice one. That's a good one. All right. That is CyberVideo. Should we get into some quick, nice things? Some quick, nice things. Have... Yeah. Let me let me show this. This was uh, on my desk when I I came in yesterday. Um, Nick, did you put this here? It had to have been you. Yeah. I. Uh, yep. I put. Fl- Found that in Austin, Texas, at a, a gas station, and it was a, or like a, it wasn't a gas, like a, a convenience store. 
they had old really? Playboys. Old and Playboys? Said, yeah, and they said huh. it had the VCR date on yeah, it. Yeah, look at that. VCR date. I read the article, too. Um, it, it's basically about how people aren't going out for dates because VCRs. You have your dates at home now. You have, yeah. you have uh, somebody over, and then you watch it on your VCR. And then they had this big list of the different movies that you can rent on VHS. And Also um, an interesting um, article about Farmer's Daughters in there, too. That I thought Yeah, was I was going to say there's yeah. lots of naked ladies in here, too. Huh, weird. Lots of them. Yeah. yeah. Not why I got it, but that's a happy accident, I guess. Okay. Uh, a couple of things. One is uh, we love the interaction we get on our social media. Uh, we have a TikTok that's very popular, and uh, we still have Facebook. I don't check it that much, but we got a bunch of different comments by one particular user, and they all said the identical thing. So I'm like, well, this person must really want to get a message across to us and our, our followers on Facebook. So let me just pull that up. Uh, it's from Umjita uh, Naga Hapi. I know this shouldn't be posted here, but I know a lot of people out there need help to get rid of herpes as well. Let him know if you see at his page. And then there's Dr. Emma Herbal Home. So that's the email address. Huh. Uh, Steve, did they sell out to you or I guess it's a free plug? This, you're giving them a free plug. No, oh, sorry. Yeah, we were ah. getting negotiations for months. I, I think Umjita, I think that he's he is the admin for the Melindaverse. Oh, is that? Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm that Facebook group. Interesting. I'm sure. So, all right. Yeah. Well, definitely. That, Who's that Melinda Khan? That, that hey, mess, mess answer the Herpyverse. He's the administrator yeah. for the. Oh, herpes. really? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, one other thing, we got a, a celebrity birthday. Uh, Caitlin McGurk from the Billy Ireland Cartoon Library and Museum, who uh, is the co-host of Saturday Morning Cartoons. Her partner Eric is celebrating a birthday today. Here's a flattering shot of Eric. Um, showing off his home office. Oh, we got to bring Plunkets back. Because if I remember correctly, Eric was the king of Plunkets. I remember we showed a couple good of ones. Plunkets. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's a pl Plunket machine. We're bringing Plunkets back. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, this looks pretty cool. I think uh, this is a recent photo of Eric here, too. So yeah, look uh, at that compact presario. Yeah, he's, wow. he looks like a fax machine. Maybe a fax modem there. And, yeah. uh, look at that. Kind of a printers. Ward. A wired mouse. Oh. So somebody's doing all right in the printer department. Yep. Yeah. So, happy fifteenth, Eric. <laughs> um. All right. What else is coming up this week? Uh, a couple of announcements. What are we going to do for EP on Thursday? EP is, EP is where we take the ten dollar and up Melinda's patron Melinda's, and we just watch an entire video. Nick, I was going to say, I don't know if you, I don't know how you, what you thought, but maybe flight call dedication. I don't know. <laughs> what do That'd think? probably be my. I, my last pick, but uh, there, I was there's one part for yeah. 20 minutes. They read the names of of soldiers from every single war, like who who lost their lives in every single war. All right, and to watch and to watch the the Boy Scouts behind them fidget is just ten dollars and up. Yep. You could watch that with. Maybe we'll watch a little bit of that, but I'd also like no. Let's not watch any of it. The say the Exorcism video, Mermaids Illustrated, or the fireworks because they're all really solid. Videos. Let's watch all three in the next three weeks. Okay, and weigh yeah. in. Which ones do you want to see? We will watch them because you are our bosses at the Patreon. Exorcism website. is really good. Okay. Uh, Bob Larson's a lot of fun, and but I really want to see the firework duo. Let's do firework duo. I'm most okay. excited about that. All right. Yep. And also, Jack we want to remind people that we've been talking about we're having our Halloween. We have a show. BCR party will be live on Halloween night, and we have uh, these Halloween costume contests where the, the viewers here have just blown us away every year with costumes. And uh, entries are now open. We already got one, but you can send yours into info at foundfootagefest.com. Entries will close on October 30th at 5 p.m. Eastern. So uh, plan your costume, send it in. It, it just has to reference any sort of thing from the show, uh, uh, from our found footage show, from a past clip, or some a video we've shown. This is a this is a fun this is a fun thing. So I had this idea the other night. Uh, me, Nick, and George hung out socially, and we played a board game. And while we were playing board games, uh, most of us were drinking caffeinated beverages. George almost drank a caffeinated beverage and then he's like oh this has caffeine in it i don't drink caffeine we're like oh you don't drink caffeine he's never had you've never had caffeine you've never been no, a no, no. i drinker. used to be i used to be a caffeine addict i used to drink six uh six like a six pack of coke every day but and my but, heart was was bouncing around the, the so but this this uh energy drink it was like one of those healthy ones where it's it was just, like four you know, cokes i haven't had one i drank a soda in like 
20 years. So. What, what I'm proposing is that next week, on next mm-hmm. week's show, we get you like the biggest, strongest, most all right, like monster, en- monster energy drink, everything. And you drink a whole can, one of the tall cans yep. for the yep. whole episode. Yep. Will you do that? Because you, you don't go to bed until like 6 a.m. anyway, right? I'm, I mean, yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. And okay. I will. Um, Should be interesting. I'd like it to be sponsored. So if we can, we can sponsor each. Uh, Steve, talk to Monster Energy Drink. See if we can get them. <laughs> I'm on talk, it. I'd like Balls Energy Drink to sponsor us. I think that'd be kind of a fun one. B-A-W-L-S. So, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but get the most powerful one, George. And oh, that's gonna. Are you gonna act weird? Do you think you'll act weird? Oh, absolutely. But you didn't mention the, the most important thing that we did when we were at Nick's. What? We watched the the HBO Max oh. uh, or show Naked, Naked Attraction. Attraction, the the uh, the all new dating show that broke my brain. Even though well, I'd seen it before. Oh, but Nick's TV is so big and the high resolution. Is, yeah, yeah. But, it's like the dongs are in there. So the show is is from England, and every time we would we would perform in England. We'd always stay up until two in the morning and we would watch a show naked attraction where it's a dating show. Somebody a contestant comes on and then they have a, a six other people who they could potentially date. And then they start at their crotch. They like are hidden behind this thing and then they raise it up. And then you see like either a beef or a dong. And then they like kind of comment on the beeves and dongs. Mm-hmm. And then it goes up and then you see their chests and then they comment on those and then you see the face, and then they pick they pick the winner. They pick the yeah. It's, we're going to do that next week with us. We're going <laughs> to. Yep. Yeah, you can't look away. It's a horror show. I mean, nobody should see genitals in that high of definition, uh, but uh, under those lighting conditions. Steve, have you seen the show? I have. You yeah, have? I saw it. I saw it in uh, in England one uh, one That's day. I was watching it, and <laughs> woke up from uh, well sleep. She had gone to bed before me, and I was just clicking around and. Once you hit on that on the channel, you ended, you're, <laughs> you're not going to anywhere. How, yeah, it was yeah. appointment television for us. We would get done with our show in Scotland at like 2 a.m. And from 2 to, th- I think there's two episodes in a row. Yeah. Like 2 to 4 a.m. Every I'm single watching. night. I now it's on HBO that. Max. Um, oh, it's fun to watch with a group, too. But that's why we're going to do an all-nude episode soon. There's going to be blurring, but everybody's clips will have nudity. And, and then Nick will name it the nude episode, and it'll get like 50,000 views. <laughs> yep. Let's not blur it out. Let's just ask all of the Melinda's just to look away. While they're yeah. watching okay. the show, so, yeah. all the algorithms. To be they won't go against. Oh, and and uh, what's going on for uh, Saturday morning cartoons this week? Oh, we're gonna do Gilligan's Planet. Tim Harrod's gonna join us. Um, and uh, I was like, "Are you an expert or anything?" He's like, "Well, I know Gilligan's Island pretty well." I was like, "Done. That's <laughs> enough right. for us." <laughs> oh boy, people people are just lining up to, to watch <laughs> this one this Saturday. Ooh, Gilligan's Island. It's Gilligan's well, Planet though. So there's a little space. spin on it. Yeah. I'm hoping for a studio audience. I, I bet it's going to be one of those that has a studio I've audience. I've watched this one. There is a laugh track. We've got it on VHS. So, yeah. um, also, fun fact that Tim told me in the email today, when he was at Conan, he did the voice of Mayor McCheese in all the Conan sketches. Ooh, Whenever wow. Mayor McCheese appeared, it was always him. And what's that guy's name? Ed Wynn, who you yeah. did the impression of? It's <laughs> yeah. an Ed Wynn impression. Oh, really? So he did an Ed Wynn to be Mayor McCheese. Yeah. Interesting. I would, I would like to have an Ed Wynn off between you and maybe Tim. This, maybe this and, Saturday. We'll and see. then we'll see who Ed won at the yeah. end. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Which Ed wins? <laughs> yes, that's what it's called. Okay. Which Ed wins? Yeah. You against right. Tim. Yeah. I like those odds. <laughs> um, we'll see who wins. Uh, All right. What are we going to go out on tonight? Uh, I, this is one that I, th- I feel like we should play again. It's not a, did we, I just completely forgot it was hunktober. It should be ending on a hunk video. We just play one hunk video. Yeah. Hunk-tober? I mean, but it's a whole month, so okay. there's going to be a couple each episode. You can't, you know, hear a lot in uh, the we first usually get, of the month. We usually get tired of it by the end of the month anyway. Yeah. So. Let's spread it out. Um, all right. So this is uh Bob from hall. He made the song Ooh. VCR party dreams. I played it a couple times. I feel like this should be our closing song. Like this should mm-hmm. close out every show. But I, I feel like I should play this at least once a year. So okay. um, here's the thing. We tried our best. If we had been prepared, we could have done better. We'll be right back right after these. Right after these words. Uh, please check out Surprise Restaurant Chat on YouTube. Give it a like. And my nose isn't full of yuck anymore. Happy birthday, Eric. Hi, I'm Jennifer Shu from Plymouth, Wisconsin. I'm eight years old, and I'm having the time of my life. Yes.
everybody. What are we? Good night. When we return, Dr. Selner will complete the bunion surgery. Yes, those are his pajamas he's wearing. All right, I gotta go. That's all. That's it. Let me see that one. Rocks are done. Gotta sleep. Bye. That's it. That it done. We did our best. If we'd been prepared, we could have done better. What do you think about Bibra? About what? In a my not in for yuck anymore. Ooh. That's all I'm doing. Cheerio, don't have a good day. Sizzler. Tinkerbell. We'll be right back right after that. Good luck from all of us at Hagen. And Kurt Polster, the real great guy. Night, night. Yeah. Goodbye. Jim's coins in Hilda.